Hi, this is going to be a fast recap of the features available in Flowstorm as of version 3.6. Before we start, I want to mention that Flowstorm was not only designed as a debugger, but also as a tool to help you understand the code base and to enhance your REPL-driven development experience. So it can be useful in situations other than chasing bugs. It does this by allowing you to turn on and off recording of everything that is happening when your programs execute, also providing a bunch of tools to explore those recordings. With that said, uh, let's jump into the demos. I will be debugging a variety of projects in this demo, but don't focus too much on them. I'll be using them just to demo the features. Flowstorm can be used together with ClojureStorm, which is just a Clojure compiler enhanced with automatic instrumentation. After adding ClojureStorm to your Depth Eden or Project CLJ, you don't need to think about instrumentation anymore. Just run your REPL, evaluate your expressions, and everything can get automatically recorded. Starting a debugger is also just a keyword evaluation away. Uh, just eval the DBG keyword to start the Flowstorm UI whenever you need to explore your recordings. Flowstorm provides a bunch of controls for stepping over your code. You can single step back and forth, something similar to step in on most debuggers, uh, which will automatically jump into any instrumented function when they get called. You can also use the step over to move back and forth, which will work like the step in control, but will jump over other function calls. It is also possible to jump around on the current function using the mouse by clicking on any of the highlighted expressions, which are the ones you have a recording for. By using the step out control, you can jump out of the current function to the next expression after the one that called this function. And finally, it is also provide controls to quickly jump to the beginning and end of your recordings. Not everything needs to be recorded all the time. You can enable and disable recording with a single click or by evaluating keywords commands at REPL. You always have the current stack trace under the stack tab at the bottom right corner, which you can also use to jump back to any previous frame. Any bindings available for this function at this point in time will be displayed in the local tab next to the stack tab. Flowstorm provides some extra navigation tooling when working with loops. Clicking on any expression that evaluated multiple times inside the same function frame will display the menu showing all the values. Clicking on any of them will move the debugger to that point in time. By default, a pretty print is displayed for all values, which is convenient for quick inspection, but there is also a more capable value inspector for more complicated values. As you can see, it is a two-pane value browser that allows you to uh, filter, dig into any sub-values, and check the meta at any level. Recording works smoothly for most closure programs when all recorded values are immutable ones, for which recording a pointer is enough. This, of course, breaks for mutable values as shown in the example. For this case, you can extend the snapshot protocol for your application mutable values to give Flowstorm a way of snapshotting them by returning an immutable version. So after defining it uh, in a non-instrumented namespace, everything should be fine. Everywhere Flowstorm shows a value, um, by providing a name and optionally a namespace, it will make the value available at the REPL. This can be used to build more functionality based on that value or just to explore it using the code instead of UI. For any function, you can define all binding values under the current form namespace, uh, which allows you to work with them from your editor. This is a common technique, sometimes referred as scope capture, 
uh, which some people accomplish by adding inline devs to the code or by using some special libraries. Flowstone enables this debugging technique with just one click without the need for modifying any code. When used with Closure Storm, uh, Flowstorm will keep track of the last uncaptured exception, um, provides a way of jumping right before the exception was fired by evaluating the EX keyword. This gives a convenient way of quickly checking for the cause. Depending on the size of the recording, sometimes single-stepping isn't the best way to start looking at your recordings. The call stack tree gives you an expandable tree of all the recorded function calls. You can click on any node to see the arguments and returned values, and double-clicking on them will take you to the stepping tool at that point in time. Another way of looking at an overview of your recordings is by using the functions list. It will show you all the recorded functions and how many times they have been called. From here, you can double click on any of them to expand the calls, where you can see the arguments and return values. Double clicking on any call will take you to the stepping tool at that point in time. Flowstorm is able to record what is happening on any thread where instrumented closure code is running. You can use the thread slits on the left to explore recordings for each thread. Sometimes being able to pause and resume threads is convenient. For example, when you are debugging a game loop that can generate a lot of recorded data per second, you can use thread breakpoints to pause your threads. You do this by finding your function in the namespace browser and finding a thread breakpoint for it by clicking on the break button. Now, every time a thread calls a function with a breakpoint, it will pause there. You can now explore what happened so far and resume the thread until the next breakpoint. Once you are done, remove the breakpoints and resume all your threads. Flowstorm was originally created to replace print line and tap debugging. But since it's sometimes convenient as a lightweight form of debugging, it also provides support for it. Automatically, everything your program taps will show in the Taps tab. You can then double-click on it and use the Value Inspector to explore it further. When starting the debugger, you can also choose between a dark and a light themes for your Flowstorm UI. Most features should also work in ClojureScript, uh, the current exceptions being automatic instrumentation and thread breakpoints. Profiling instrumented code will not be accurate, since instrumentation adds extra instructions to your code. For this and other cases, instrumentation can be disabled and then re-enabled by evaluating the noinst and inst keywords respectively. So you can disable instrumentation, recompile your code, and then profile it when you need it. Finally, if you want to try all this stuff from your REPL, when starting Flowstorm with ClojureStorm, there is an in-REPL tutorial you can execute that will guide you over most of the features shown in this demo. You start it by evaluating the tab basics keyword. And that's it. This demo doesn't cover all Flowstorm features or the different modes it can be used in, but I hope it gives a good overview of all the functionality and how it can help you. So until next time, bye bye.